making another ring. This time it's a half crown. And this time, I can't get it wrong. This isn't the one. So I got a request, oh, must be about three weeks ago, for a 1946 half crown ring to a, I think it's size T, I need to look that up. And I had a lot of problems finding a good 1946 one. Now, 1946 was a strange year. Unlike these, this is a 67, I think, yeah, 67. Um, which were Cooper Nickel. The 46 is 50% silver. So it'd be nicer to make a ring out of. But hard as I tried, I couldn't find a decent one. Now that wasn't too much of a problem because at the time my arthritis was massively, massively flaring up to the point whereby I could hardly hold a cup. I managed to hold a beer glass all right, but um, it was just, it was, oh, there's no way I was going to make a ring. No chance, nada. Um, and then I eventually found um, a really nice 1946 and I will show you why. It's really nice. This is brand new. It's come straight out of a bullion bag and it's never been in circulation, uncirculated. This is the 46 one that I found. It has, I think, been in circulation, but I think apart from a tiny little bit of uh, discoloration down by the H of the half, tiny, tiny little mark between the F and the C, and above the N. In fact, I think those are probably meant to be there. Yes, they are. I've never worked on one um, this old. Well, I have older, much, much older. Um, 1800s coins I've done. But this is the first 1946. So this arrived just as we were going off on holiday. So I contacted the customer via their mom and said, look, I could rush it, but I don't really want to. I'd like to take my time doing it. And she said, yeah, that's okay. <clears throat> I said, I'm gonna, gonna be away for a bit. Um, when do you need it by? And she told me, and she said, that's his birthday. I can't actually say obviously when that is, but my birthday too. Oh, do, 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 do. I wasn't born in 1946, by the way, nor 1967, somewhere in between those. So today, I'll send him that afterwards, because um, that would have been his 21st birthday, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would have been his 21st birthday. Crumbsies. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this into, I'll go and check the size, into a ring. The design on this is slightly different. So what I'm going to try and do is punch out so as to leave this detail. Where's me little, I use that as a pointy, the pointy stick. I want to leave this detail as much as possible. In this one, it doesn't, you see, I can, I can punch clean in there to remove this. But here, I don't want to damage this, so I'm gonna, gonna use a, a punch, which is probably, I think, uh, seven sixteenths is gonna be too big. Ooh, right. So three eighths. Which is six sixteenths. Oh, I think that might be all right. Let's um, I think that's going to be about perfect. Okay. So you know what happens next if you watched any of these videos before. Next, I take this beautiful, brand new looking coin 
and chuck it underneath a blow lamp, uh, blow torch, and that is to soften it down. It's called annealing. So that will soften it to the point whereby I can punch the hole in there nicely. Right, let's do it. Now those who follow this will know I need to be very careful here. Because 0.5 silver is quite easy to melt. So that's all I'm going to do at the moment. Right, changes the look of it a little bit, doesn't it? Safety first, turn this off. I'm going to be using the blow lamp, blow torch, blow lamp, blow torch, a fair bit more. So I won't bother turning it off on the main bottle. But now we're going to punch the hell. <sighs> do, 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 do. This is always the scary bit, boys and girls. The point of no return. Oh, ho, ho. Okay, we now no longer have a coin. We now... have a half crown. Whoops, come on. A half crown polo. Right, let's get it out of there, take a look. I think that was the perfect punch size for that. So we've got a bit from the middle, which I'll put in a little uh, a little bag and a thing saying the bit from the middle. It's not a bad coin, this at all. It's a beautiful coin. Um, yes, that is, I think, once that's opened out and stretched, we should keep most of that detail. The next part of this, for those who don't know, is I get one of these. Now this is a deburring tool. And what it does is it shaves around here and it ensures that inside has no imperfections. Now I'm gonna do that a couple of times. So it will probably, if you can see on, sorry, macro isn't very good on here. If you can see these, details here will be shaved back a little bit because I want to try and keep this line when this is ringed so let's clean the inside of this deburr it and then give it um, a polish with some very fine emery pads that's a bit of a better close-up so I don't know if you can see now what I meant by when I clean this up, it will get nearer to these edgy bits. So, um, happy with that. Yep. What I'm going to do now is anneal it again on blowtorch. And then we're going to start the folding process. The very first part of turning a coin into a ring is to make it into a cone. And, um, we do that using one of these dies and I should say one of these die. I don't think you plural, never mind. Uh, and this little stainless cone. Now this is the only time we'll use that there, like that metal on metal. We'll pop that under there and we just, oh, that's it, that's all, all we do. That is literally all we do. And that now has started the process of turning this into a ring. You see there, using that size punch has kept that detail just about how I wanted it. But what I'm going to do again is polish the inside of this again, because here the slightest imperfection as we come to stretch it, could lead to a split. Here's one. Here's one I split earlier. 
That was um, a one gilder from 18 something or other, I can't remember. Is it on there? Oh no, it's not, not quite that old. Oops, caught it on me. There we are. 1952. I can't remember what the really old one was. It was a really old one that I melted. That was that. Oh no, it's the same. 52. It doesn't matter anyway. Um, so that's just to show that things do go wrong. Occasionally. Not often, but occasionally. That one did twice in a row. So now we need to just polish the inside of that before plonking it back in there and then getting one of these fibre cones and folding it a little bit more in there. But guess what I'm going to do first, boys and girls? Yep, going to anneal it. Right, annealed and polished. And now the first real fold with the oops, fibre cone. That's all I'm doing. Tiny, tiny little bits at a time and I've got it jammed thank you tiny little bits at a time to open this out and as you can see I'm going to anneal and polish that a little bit more before carrying on with that to open it out I'm not going to film every single bit of that because it'll be a bit boring uh, especially the annealing and polishing bit but I'll be back when we have that I need to go and just check what size we're making this to so when we've opened this out and made it more of a cone I shall be back and return sometime later where are we at we are up to nearly a queue so we need to come down to here it didn't seem like a lot but it's a fair amount of uh, a fair amount of stretching to be done. Between every stretching, I am annealing, and after a year, two, three, or I don't know how many years, I've eventually, I think, reached the end of my first gas tank. Um, oh, it's running out anyway, but I should have enough in there to uh, finish this off. I've got others outside. Uh, this now is we need to open this side out and then squish this side in. Now I can either do that in that there or by forcing it into the forming dies or over there I have got some um, very uh, low angle cones to gently pull the outside in. But we'll see, uh, first hopefully I can just get it down nicely in one of those by pushing it like that we'll see because this has got to come out a little bit first so anneal let's put that back annealing it and uh carry on on the ring stretcher on the durston ring stretcher if you haven't seen this before what happens is as you move the handle up it pushes a a spline up the middle and then these splines on the outside stretch out okay like that ring stretcher let's carry on later much later actually the next day later and um, I have shaved the inside of the reed side you can see that there now the reason for that if you follow these you will know <coughs> let's get one of the other ones the the reed is obviously the thickest part of the coin a stroke ring so we have to size it to that which means we've got to make the non-read side bigger than the size T. This will be the size T, but in order for it to be ring shaped in our, uh, 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 instead of cone shaped, the non-read side needs to be stretched out, maybe to a V, U or a V. Um, but uh, just to make it more comfortable, I always shave, uh, if you look at the outside, that ridge 
that reeded ridge when on the inside and compressed can be quite uncomfortable so on this shaved it all out and then i'll polish it to get rid of those little sanding marks um but yeah that just makes it nicer to wear right so uh this is the next day by the way uh, people often ask why have you got all of these on here well these are done all of these are done up to the stage of all the hard work finger work is done so even if my fingers are really playing up which thankfully they're not today but and i was to get uh, someone asking for a, a threepenny bit ring i've got the basics of them all prepared um, but i do need to tidy them away i've got others of shillings two bob bits sixpences they're all they're all in there somewhere um anyway back to today's let's get finally making it into a ring okay we have a ring shape it's ever so slight bulge around the lettering but i'm all right with that because it will highlight the lettering Oh. Yeah, here we have a 1946 half crown. Let's get it polished up. They want a, a sort of like a, an antique finish. Um, so I'll see how well it sort of polishes up on the first spin and then perhaps use a liver of sulfur. I'm not sure yet. But, uh, this is the detail on this was so good that I didn't really want to. Um, mask it too much by a high polish or anything. Right, let's uh, let's get it polished. See what we reckon, eh? Some time on the wheel. Some time with a little Dremel. Some time with the uh, Scotch Bright pad. Now for our thingy bob, and what have we got? Focus. You're not going to focus. All right, that's better. There we go. I think that's about as antique as I want it to be. It's got the it's got an antique patina, but also brings out the detail. Yeah, good. That's turned out rather jolly. So next, I'm going to give it a couple of coats of a ceramic lacquer. Ooh. Oh, jolly. Yeah, that is... I don't want to make it any more antique than that. Good. Very pleased with the way these little bits of detail here have come out. Very pleased. Right. Lacquer it, pack it, and post it. Cheers, guys. If you've liked this rubbish, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Um, if you click like it tells YouTube's algorithms that this might be worth <laughs> recommending to other people if you've seen this before and you fancy having a go please do you don't need all of the tooling I've got uh, there's loads of YouTube videos but um, doing stuff like this is really good for the mind and perversely good for the fingers as well um, the more you use your fingers, the less the arthritis will kick in and disable you. Until next time, whatever you're doing, do it safely and cheers.